Welcome to the Chemistry Question. Jordan here, and today we will be discussing radioactivity and radiation. Radioactivity was first noted by Antoine Henri Becquerel, but Pierre and Marie Curie really studied the phenomenon and determined that the radiation emitted was not the result of a chemical change, but rather a change within the atom itself. When the nucleus of an element is unstable, it transforms into another element by emitting particles and or energy to become more stable. While it is impossible to predict exactly when any atom will decay, we can model a probability function of decay, which, with a large enough sample, shows when half of the sample will decay. Knowing what radioactivity is, let's now talk about radiation. We'll first divide radiation into two categories, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. But before we talk about particle radiation from radioactive decay, let's talk about the electromagnetic spectrum and the radiation from photons. We begin at the low end of the non-ionizing part of the electromagnetic spectrum, radio waves. Radio waves can send signals and create a small electric current, but they don't do much else. Continuing, we have microwave radiation, which has a little more energy and can thus excite molecules, causing them to heat up. You are probably familiar with this because you may have used a microwave oven to heat up your oh-so-delicious burrito that you had for lunch. Cell phones also operate on the microwave spectrum, and this is to some controversy related to possible health effects. In fact, I had difficulty finding a good image depicting microwave radiation because I had to sift through images like this, this, and this. I invited the angry cat back to answer the question, is microwave radiation from cell phones going to kill us all? The truth is that the amount of microwave radiation from cell phones produces only a very small effect on the body, and while we don't know the true long-term effects of the area of the body near the phone having a slightly higher temperature, it would be a better use of energy to focus on the way cell phones actually are going to kill us all. As energy increases and wavelengths get shorter, we move to infrared. We cannot see infrared, but we feel it as heat because infrared has enough energy to carry heat. We can, however, build cameras that detect infrared and use them to produce heat maps and see in the dark. Next, we have visible light comprising everything we see. It is also necessary to provide energy for biochemical processes such as photosynthesis. Any part of the electromagnetic spectrum with shorter wavelengths and more energy than visible light has the ability to knock electrons off their atoms, and we thus begin ionizing radiation. This radiation can damage DNA and cause cancer. First, we have ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation is the chief cause of sunburns and skin cancer. More energetic still is X-ray radiation, which not only ionizes, but it can also penetrate deep into body tissues. While this is incredibly dangerous in high doses, small doses can be extremely beneficial because of the penetrating power, as we can use this to see inside the body and better diagnose medical issues such as broken bones. At the absolute highest end of the spectrum, we have gamma rays with the power to kill living cells with high enough doses. In fact, a celestial gamma ray burst aimed directly at Earth could potentially trigger mass extinction. However, small doses have a beneficial use because they can kill cancer cells. We will return to gamma radiation shortly, but but first we will return to radioactive decay. The three types of decay we will address are all examples of ionizing radiation. Going in order of the Greek alphabet, we start with alpha decay. When a nucleus is just too big to be stable, it reduces its size via emission of an alpha particle, also known as a helium nucleus. You may recall from the Magic Numbers video that helium is incredibly stable, and this is why helium and not hydrogen is released. The helium nucleus fires out from the parent nucleus at close to the speed of light, but quickly slows down and steals two electrons from surrounding atoms to form a helium atom. Alpha radiation, luckily, can be stopped by a sheet of paper and cannot penetrate skin. However, it can cause serious damage inside the body if an alpha emitter is ingested. Beta radiation occurs in nuclei with an unstable ratio of protons to neutrons. Most frequently, there are an excess of neutrons, so a neutron will decay into a proton and release an electron. Less commonly, a proton becomes a neutron and releases a positron, or an anti-electron. 
beta particles of greater energy than alpha particles and require a sheet of aluminum or a block of wood to be stopped. However, their energy is far less than the third type of radiation, gamma rays. I mentioned gamma rays earlier as part of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, and we did not talk about its source. When alpha or beta decay does not release enough energy to make a nucleus stable, it emits gamma radiation to get rid of the excess energy without changing the identity of the elements. Gamma rays, as mentioned before, are incredibly penetrating and require large ladder concrete blocks for shielding. Even this is not perfect, and is best represented by a tenth value thickness. This is the thickness of a material required to shield 90% of the gamma rays, letting only 10% pass through. The tenth value thickness for lead with gamma rays is around 2 inches. A final note on the dangers of radiation. The dose equivalence is measured in sieverts. One sievert represents one joule of energy from radiation absorbed in the body per kilogram of mass. With every sievert absorbed, one's chance of developing cancer is 5.5%, and this increases at a linear rate until one hits 100%. This effect is cumulative over a lifetime. Thank you for watching the chemistry question. Apologies for the length, but we had a great deal of material to cover. Be sure to subscribe and leave questions or suggestions in the comments below. See you next time for a hopefully shorter video.